Vicky Bly, hello Vicky, uh, says, I love the Hindenburg recreation. Episode 70, I believe. Yeah. Um, do you and Jamie, did you and Jamie have as much fun with it as it appeared? It did seem to take you by surprise multiple times. Yes, that one was really great. That one was super fun. Hold on, I'm gonna show you something. I even kept the original layout of all of the sections of the circles required to make the Hindenburg. This was the scale we built our Hindenburg in, and this was the printout I asked my production team for, and then the markings and guides I made on it so that Jamie and I could build uh, several Hindenburgs. Um, <clears throat> That was, a, that was a huge story for us, and I really, really loved producing it. Um, there is a, that is one of the only times we had a fire in M5 that we didn't intend to set. We, our, our Hindenburg model actually caught on fire while shooting. And I think I remember, wow. I think I remember seeing, <laughs> trying to remember how this laid out. I saw that the fire happened and so did Jamie. He went to take care of one part of it. I went to take care of another. And one of the things I was going to do, I, I had a piece of plywood and for some reason I was gonna swing it. I don't think I was gonna blow it out, but the practical result was that Jamie moved his head and I basically whacked him across the head with this giant piece of plywood. <laughs> There was like a firefighting purpose to my swinging of that piece of plywood, and I can't remember it anymore. But I do remember that as far as Jamie was concerned, he like galvanized into action, and he looked up, and I was like, surprise, my phone, boom, and just whacked him in the face with this piece of plywood. <laughs> um, ah, that also, that was the episode that John Schwartz came out on. John Schwartz is a writer for the New York Times. Um, he has had several specialties as a writer for the New York Times. Back then, uh, in 04 or so, 05, uh, he was the science writer and he wrote an article that uh, asked the question at the front, is Mythbusters the best science show on television? Now I know any headline that, answer, that asks a question, the answer is always no. Uh, Fine, sure, but uh, that was Tuesday Science Times above the fold, a complete half page of the Hindenburg burning and that question is Mythbusters the best science show on television. Um, that was, uh, that felt unbelievable to see our, 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 our scrappy little project on the front page of the science section of the New York Times. Uh, and I still remember actually driving back to the, back to San Francisco with John Schwartz and having long talks. Oh, I remember what we talked about. We chatted about our families uh, and I told him about my dad and he went and found uh, a bunch of mentions of my dad in the Times from back in the 50s and the 60s for art shows and gallery shows and some reviews uh, and sent me this little compendium of information about my pop which I thought was really sweet. Um, <clears throat> Extafa, I haven't seen that name before. Extafa says, which external company or associate was your favorite to work with, i.e. fire department, bomb range, et cetera? Uh, I think many uh, regular viewers will know that the answer to this for me is the bomb squad. Um, the Alameda County Sheriff's Bomb Squad, which was uh, run for many years by J.D. Nelson, who's also the PIL, uh, uh, Public Information Officer for the Alameda County Sheriff's Department. J.D. JD is absolutely, uh, along with Frank Doyle and a few other luminaries over the tenure of Mythbusters, an absolute Mythbuster. He's not even an honorary Mythbuster. He's a genuine one like Frank Doyle. Uh, J.D. Nelson, one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, made so much possible for us. So there's that relationship, right? Where JD and the people at the Alameda County Sheriff's Department in Dublin, Pleasanton, were just so critical to Mythbusters' success over the years. Absolutely. 
Um, and then on top of that, it turns out that bomb squads in particular are like among my favorite groups of people in the world. And I know that sounds strange, but uh, here's the thing that I was told. We were in Matsu, Alaska, uh, which is I think Sarah Palin's old district or one of her districts. Wait, did, was she a Congress? I can't remember. Anyway, we filmed in Matsu, Alaska with uh, I think the Anchorage Bomb Squad. And uh, the, the head of that bomb squad, Denny, was telling me that he was a CO in the military for many years. And as such, the military would ask him to keep an eye, like COs are asked to keep an eye on certain personality types for jobs that are difficult to fill. This is how he explained it to me. And he said, look, I, I'll show you. And he showed me the sheet of specific things to look for for someone who would make a good bomb tech. And it is a fascinating list. I wish I still had it. Uh, but it included all of these descriptions. Hold on, sorry, my nose is running again. Um, it includes all of these. Thank you for your patience. Did you mute while I honked? <laughs> That's great. Um, it included all these references to personality types that sounded, they said, um, ideal bomb squad members are uh, terrific contingency thinkers. They really like solving problems. They like encountering new problems all the time. They work well with others, but can also work well alone. And then there was this irreverent, often dark sense of humor. And this reads like, to me, a description of Jamie, like a hybrid of Jamie and I. Uh, and I think this is one of the reasons that every time we worked with bomb squads, and eventually Jamie and I became <clears throat> lifetime, our, were given lifetime honorary memberships in the IABTI, the International Association of Bomb Technicians and Investigators. And we went to Knoxville, Tennessee for their annual convention. And by the way, bomb techs, I will come back. I had so much fun at that, uh, at that convention. Uh, we were made honorary lifetime members at that convention. And uh, we were treated so well. And again, every time I've worked with bomb squads, I have found a group of the most um, collegial, easy to work with uh, people. And when you think it through, as I have done many times, it actually makes total sense because a bomb squad never knows what it's going to encounter. In fact, their whole reason for existing is to be able to deal with something that hasn't been dealt with before. IEDs and explosives and old munitions. Oh my God, do you know the number of times that entire police departments have to be cleared because someone found grandpa's footlocker and brought in a hand grenade? Here is a helpful tip. Here's a helpful tip. If you're going through a family member's old military and you find something you think might be live, do not put it in a box and bring it to the police department. <laughs> Take it outside your house and call the police. They will come deal with it. That is the way they would prefer it. They don't want you to bring it to the counter of the police station. Um, <clears throat> yeah, bomb text, absolutely. I was just texting with JD the other day. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.